Yes, good morning, students. Yesterday we did tenses, present indefinite, past indefinite, future indefinite, then present continuous and past continuous, right? So let's have a, one look at the tenses again. So one, she writes a letter to her father. So what kind of tense is it? It is present indefinite. How do we make out like whether it is present indefinite or past, what? How we look at the verb. And what's the main verb here? Writes. And writes is present form. It is present form. So it is present indefinite. There is no helping verb with it. No is MR, no was, were, has, have, nothing. So it's only one first form of verb. So that is present indefinite. So she writes is present indefinite. We are to change this into past indefinite. So what's the rule of past indefinite? Second form of verb. That is the past form. So it will become wrote. Otherwise it would remain the same. She wrote a letter to her father every day. So can you tell me this sentence in one more better way? If I say, if we say she wrote a letter to her father every day. Yes. Very good. So you can uh, even, uh, you know, interactive English when we use, and we even say she used to write a letter to her father every day. She used to do this earlier. Now she doesn't do it. So another way to express the same thing is used to. She used to write a letter to her father every day. Right? When we say like this, it becomes past indefinite. Right? So another form is future indefinite. What's the rule of future indefinite? Future indefinite. Yeah. So we can use will or any other model. Right? So she will write a letter to her father every day. She will write a letter to her father every day. Is there any other way to which we can say the same thing? If not exactly, but to some extent, we can use some other expressions to convey the same thing. Hmm? Yes. There is one more way to express future indefinite. What is that? Yes. Yes. Yes, she is going to write letters to her father every day. She is going to do this. Okay, she will write or she is going to write a letter every day. But there is some difference. When should we say she will write determined, that is a decision, that is a planning. But when we say she is going to, it means that it is almost decided. There is some, you know, difference in meaning, but yes. In the end, some to some extent, they convey the same meaning. Okay, she is going to write a letter to her father every day, you know. So she is going to write. She is going to write also, let me write. She is going to write a letter to her father every day. Next is present continuous. So when we say present continuous, so what is the continuous form? That is present participle. What is the continuous form? That is present participle. That is that you will be writing writing word first. Writing without thinking. Writing will be there. Now with writing with present continuous, you will be using one helping verb. So because it is present, the so present form will be is, am or are. So here, she, uh, she is, uh, yeah, she's writing a letter to her father every day. Hmm? Why? It's not always for present. She's writing a letter to her father every day. She writes a letter to her father every day or she's writing a letter to her father every day. Not much difference. Okay. So then is past continuous. So continuous, what's the form of continuous? Present participle. When I say continuous, then present participle you write without any thought. Without any? Yeah. 
I say think even than you think. My point is like this is uh, this present participle will come with continuous by default. Okay, my point is this. So, but you should always think. Okay, so past continuous would be past oh was she was. If I had written the subject as I, then then also I was. If I had written uh, they, they were. So you know all these things, right? Okay, next, she was writing a letter to her father every day. Yeah, now future continuous, again for continuous writing. Wait, wait. So what for future, which verbs are there? What else? No? Will, suppose we take will over here. Why be? Why be with will? We need one helping verb. But why do we require two helping verbs here? Here it was one, here it was one, here it was one, here it was like one main verb. But here why will be? Present participle is not written with a model. But why? But I'll take first form. But that first form is there, right is there. So what? Though you are right, but I'll take first form of verb. That is the rule. Okay, present participle doesn't come with the models. We should not say she will writing. So with the model, we are always to use V1. That is present verb. So that's why we use first form in the form of B. She will be writing a letter to a father every day. So when we say she will be writing a letter to a father every day, it means that she has not yet started. She has not uh, yet decided, but she will be writing it. She will be doing this. Okay, somewhere in the future, she will be starting this work. What's the difference when you say she will write a letter or she will be writing a letter? Hmm? Don't tell me, ma'am, this is present and past, future indefinite, that is future continuous. Don't tell me this. I am asking you the difference in meaning. When you say, ma'am, she will write a letter to her father. Yes. When you say she will write a letter, where has it gone? This. It, yeah, it, it means that it is being determined. And what, what does it mean future? Like she will be. She will be writing a letter. So you say, ma'am, she might be writing a letter. That is okay. You can replace will with may, might, can, could, anything. She can be writing a letter. She could be writing a letter. She may be writing a letter. So these things have different meanings. So when you say she will be writing a letter to a father, she will write a letter very determined. She will be writing a letter to a father every day. No. She will be writing. Will is already there. When you say she will write a letter, you are simply telling about somebody's determination. When you say, I will write a letter or I shall write a letter, it's about your decision, planning or, or determination. But when you say, uh, she will be writing a letter, you are simply talking about one particular time in the future when, she, when the work will be going on. Here it is tense-based you know, sentence. For example, I say, when you come to my house, then I'll be writing a letter. Got it? The way we do, did it for the past. When you came to my house, I was doing it. When you come to my house tomorrow, I will be doing that work. It is that way. So simply, we don't usually say like this. She'll be writing a letter. When? When you will call her. When you call her, she will be writing a letter to her father. Got it? So here it is about the about some specific time when it will be, when that particular task will be going on. Is that clear? Otherwise, in isolation, we don't say like this. Do you say like this? Do you talk with your friends? Uh, I'll be watching movie. Finish. Your friend will say when? When you will call me? When you call me in the evening, then I'll be watching a movie. Then don't disturb I'll call, I'll talk only for a minute. 
because I'll be watching a movie, then I don't want to be disturbed for a long time. Got it? Clear? So when you say she will be doing, that is about a particular time in the future when something will be at that particular point of time when it would be going on. Is that clear? Okay, so this, so future continuous we did not do yesterday, but the rule is it is either will or any other model plus first form of verb that is be. Along with this, we use present participle that is v1 ing. Will be v1 ing. Lavanya, is that clear? Hmm? Any doubt till here? No? Yes? Yeah, she can be, uh, I can be watching a movie. I could be, okay. Future indefinite, yes? What are you, what's your question? Uh, I can write, I can wait for you. So we co don't call it exactly future indefinite. We don't call it. That's why they are, they are separately dealt with models. We talk about models separately. Okay, for a particular exact time in future, we talk about will or shall usually. But otherwise, the other forms like a can, may, could, might, would, they are also somewhere in the future. Okay, when I say, uh, I would like to have a cup of tea. I would mm -hmm. like to have a cup of tea. I don't mean that I had it. It's not about past. Would is not about past. It's also about future. But it has a different meaning than when if I say, I will have a cup of tea. I will have a cup of tea. I want it by all means. But I would like to have a cup of tea. Uh, like, yeah, if you'll offer me, then I would like to have it. Yeah, if you offer, then I would like to have it. Would you please uh, do this for me? It doesn't mean, if you say, will you please do it for me? Or would you please do it for me? Not much difference, but when you say, would you please, it is more courteous. Right? When you, uh, actually in languages, we have to understand certain nuances. When you talk in your own uh, native languages, you don't bother much about the exact words. The tone matters. For example, in Hindi, when you say, uh, uh, when you request somebody to get something done, you don't always say, Kripya mera mujhe pendi jiye. Do you say like this? How do you say the same thing in Hindi? In a very polite manner? Are you that formal in your language? But in English, people are very formal because they don't use language very, very commonly. Okay, we don't try to become very efficient in using language the way we have already become efficient in our own language. You don't just say like this, Kripya mujhe apna kalam dijiye. You never say like this. It's not about making fun of our language. It's not about that. But when we use our own language, we are not very formal. Instead of saying, Kripya mujhe apna pan dijiye, you say, uh, no, it's not about being rude. When you are talking to your, uh, your senior, elder, maybe parents or teacher, you don't even say, Kripya mujhe papa apna pan dijiye. You talk respectfully. You don't say the way you just know you people were speaking. Uh -huh, yes. Got it? So there is a little bit of change in tone. That is the model. That is model. Okay. So that tone is about using the correct models at the right place. For uh, becoming perfect in, uh, yeah, if you want to master English, then you must master models. They make your language more courteous. Okay. If you want to move in the society and want to be called as a well-mannered person, master the models. You will be. Very easily you'll become that. Okay? So don't just keep on reading the rules on like may is used for permission, might is used for love. There are far more, more, more rules. We'll do that. Okay, so these are about these rules which we did yesterday only but now we are going to continue further.
so are you people uh, able to understand online any doubt so everything fine others those who are listening raise hand those who are listening to me they raise hand only dhavni is listening dhavni prabhjot navnur okay chatanya is also attentive okay well done so in attentive children are now gurleen kaur what happened now yes all attentive well done okay now where were we tenses now we are to continue with the future continuous now done let me speak up future continuous would mean will or shall plus be plus plus present continuous form right v1 plus ing that we have done now let's continue with the next one uh here we were writing like this right now we'll pick up perfect so past perfect okay first let us talk about what do you mean by perfect when you say ma'am i'm perfectly fine i per i'm perfect she is perfect it's perfect you know when you talk about something as being perfect it means it is 100 on 100 you know when you when it is done to 100% satisfaction that is perfect otherwise do you say perfect very easily otherwise we don't say perfect even when it is 99.9 we don't say perfect we say something is missing so perfect is when it is 100% done okay so from there it the word has come present perfect tense now let us talk about what are the perfect verbs there are perfect verbs perfect which are the perfect verbs has have had what are the perfect verbs yeah. write down note down if somebody ask you what are the perfect verbs which are the best verbs in the in english rather in all tenses in all languages the best verbs are the perfect verbs are has have had now the point is why are they called the best verbs about what about action okay yes so they are called perfect verbs because they show that something has been done to 100% completion something has been 100% le done something has been completed to 100% level suppose uh, i ask you to write an essay it's a long essay then i i'll keep on asking yes yes so time is over what will you say if your essay is not over please five minutes please five minutes okay so if suppose you have done it what do you say you say i have done i have done you know you you don't say done okay it should be done i have done i have done you know that is short form done okay in short in you know very one word if you are to say then i'm done but basically it is i've done i've done i have done so what's the short form of i've i have done i've done i've done i've i apostrophe v e you know so i've done so when do you say i've done when it is complete right so when you uh, so we'll be comparing this main tense with something else also but first let us talk about past perfect when we are talking about the past perfect then it would be had plus third form that is past participle now the rule is perfect forms perfect verbs always take past participle right on the rule wherever you will use past perfect blindly use past participle with it 
but don't be blind okay so my point is only that it is a rule by default past participle is used with the perfect verbs will you remember this rule wherever you use one have or has or had there remember the third form will be there whether it is uh, uh, present uh, perfect past perfect future perfect future perfect continuous whatever with perfect third form will come right for with continuous present participle was there by default and with perfect verb past participle is by default right so past perfect had plus third form why had because had is the second form of has or have so the forms are has has and have are what are they what are has and have they are perfect but they are real brothers okay real siblings okay they have a cousin had so has have or had and third form is also had and what's the present participle of this hmm? what's the present participle of has what's the present participle of has okay i'm giving you 10 seconds think what's the present participle of has you also apply your mind online no no what did you say ansh repeat no actually i i'm asking like this so that i get confirmed that you are no. it's very easy when i'll give you the answer you laugh at yourself what's the present participle of has okay anyone from here okay they are raising hand let's see chatanya yes wait chatanya yes beta क्लैपिंग फॉर जिया एंड जॉनवी ओके आई डोंट नो हू आंसर एक्सैक्टली सो करेक्ट आंसर इज है Hmm. i know i know so the form is having having is the present participle of has and have both got it what's the present participle of had huh no no answer can you form the present participle of past form no present participles are always from present verbs okay don't tell me heading okay so has and have both have having as the present participle okay so it was very simple did you laugh at yourself okay lavanya stand up so tell us what are the perfect verbs what are the perfect verbs quiz one word answer lavanya what are you doing what are the perfect verbs wait let her wake up abhi online wala thoda sa nasha idhar hi hai hai na yes now you speak let her think the answer will come from her yes So the moment you wake up, the correct answer comes up. Sit down. Well done. Clap for Lavanya. She thought and answered. So has and have are the perfect words, right? Okay. So 
we were talking about present perfect now what's the rule of present perfect huh? has or have plus past participle say past participle don't say third form if you will say past participle you will never forget what past participle is so has or have plus past participle i've done my work i've taught you the tenses but you've still not learned it okay now let's come to future perfect no bond will speak just karan will tell us so future perfect tell the rule no one will speak manya vid yes uh, just karan what hmm? which verbs we use for future no one will tell him anything which verbs we use for future just karan you know that answer yes which verbs when you have to say something in future what do you say yes that's the answer you always know the answers but what's the problem what's the problem yes we don't think that we know the answer and why don't we think that we know the answer because we don't think what we don't do we don't think what we do always instead of thinking what we do always instead of thinking we talk when we are not talking then we do what we do no no when we are not talking then we are dreaming we are we are in some other world so what is best two things are best number 1 if somebody is speaking with you listen and when listening is going inside let your mind think side by side be have some critical analysis side by side if i am saying like has and have plus present participle then your mind should be telling you present participle is third form of verb yes i have done my work like this you should be thinking side by side then learning take, takes place that's why if after half an hour children get tired those who learn those who study very those who are thoughtful okay thoughtful children get tired after half an hour and uh, dreamy children become sleepy after half an hour so what what do you become after half an hour don't tell me sleepy sleepy means that you are dreaming ha ah, tired is okay you should get tired and that's why you people are asked to bring your tiffins fruit and everything water bottle are you okay today hmm okay i'll talk to him later on okay so future perfect will or shall plus plus see for future we have written will shall for perfect what to write have i've told you like whenever there is perfect word then write perfect verb with will or shall we don't use has okay with will or shall we use only have can we use had lavanya with will or shall why uh then can't we use past form with will shall why because with will or shall we always use present verb right so with will or shall present form have plus plus will shall have plus dear very good past participle that is third form very good silent clap for dear she gave exactly the correct point past participle she didn't say third form of verb rather i said that so she will have she will have done her work 
I will have finished my work in the evening. Okay. You might have or you may have gone to market in the evening. Okay. So this is perfect tense which we have done today. Tomorrow we'll be continuing with one more tense that is very important. And tomorrow we'll be talking about the comparison between various tenses.